Hey there, hi. This is Rob with Ben Ale, and I performed the inspection on 1499 South Tanager Way in Boise. Uh, this is your video report. Uh, so this is just a courtesy to compliment the written report. I do always like to start my videos off with that and just encourage you to still read the written report. There's going to be other useful information that we're not going to touch on here in this video. Uh, and then additionally, I just find that it's helpful. It, it, it can be useful to have things written down in front of you alongside the photos uh, paired with those explanations. Uh, with this video to, to go ahead and fill in any gaps that that may leave. So uh, now that we have that out of the way, the way that this works is we're going to go through what are called summary items. Um, so we're going to touch on summary one items. Those will be highlighted in red. And we're going to touch on summary three items. Those will be highlighted in orange. Uh, there are summary two and four. We won't touch on those here in this video. Uh, but that's other useful information. Things like where's your main water shutoff valve, what size of the furnace filters, um, you know, where do you put the furnace filter? So good, useful information to know uh, that will be waiting for you in the written report. Uh, again, what we will touch on is summary one, red ticket items, uh, typically because the cost associated with repair because of time sensitivity of the, uh, um, excuse me, the time sensitivity uh, of the item, uh, or it can be a safety concern. Uh, in regard to summary three, those will be in orange. Think routine maintenance, small repairs, uh, things of that nature. So. Uh, now that we've kind of established our parameters, we'll jump right in, and I'll just try my best to, to cruise through these and, and get us through these in a timely manner. Uh, starting out on the exterior, it looks like that uh, that middle gable uh, on the back of the home there uh, into the family room does not appear to be part of the original structure, uh, so I would recommend you inquire to see uh, if that work was permitted. Uh, looking at the driveway, you can see here that the tree roots are lifting up that pad there, so it has caused uneven surfaces there, uh, so I just wanted to make you aware of that. And again, we have some settling at the entry stoop as well. Uh, looks like that slab or that, uh, yeah, that slab there's kind of just started to separate and settle. Um, again, some, some settling on the concrete uh, there on the back patio slab. Not unusual concrete kind of settles. Uh, most of settling occurs in the first few years, um, and then uh, the uh, soil tends to stabilize. And we do have negative grading on the exterior of the home, so I'd recommend doing some back filling uh, just to ensure that. Uh, you know, snow melt and uh, rain shed, et cetera, are going to shed away from the home and away from the uh, crawl space and foundation. Uh, we did have a few trees that are very close to the structure uh, that you may want to just kind of keep on your radar. I didn't note any damage to the foundation. Uh, there always is that possibility uh, of tree root damage. Uh, so you may want to remove some trees uh, to get them just away from the, the structure. Looking at the fence, the fence could use some, some minor repair, uh, you know, the gates as well, but it does appear to be serviceable. Uh, the shed, I just was taking a look here at the back of the home, there's a shed, and as water sheds off of this um, shed, it's going to divert water onto the siding, which can cause uh, you know water to, to damage the siding. So uh, you may want to consider uh, relocating that or spinning it around. Uh, looking at the siding, we have warped siding here, right? And so you can see here, it's actually causing gaps. And then when we get into the attic, just because of the, the way that the home was constructed, we don't have any sheathing underneath this area. It's allowing for pest entry. It's allowing for moisture intrusion as well. Uh, so we do want to get that siding uh, repaired. Uh, looking here, anywhere that we have any penetrations through the siding, so you can see here we have some conduit penetrates through. We want to seal around that. You can see here we have all that daylight coming through again to the point of pest or uh, moisture intrusion. Uh, the handrail there on the deck is very loose. We'll get that properly secured. Taking a look at the roof, there's kind of this gap here in the flashing, uh, and it's leaving some of the roof decking there exposed as well. And typically, we don't want flashing to be just popped up like this. We want it to be tucked into uh, materials to properly function. Uh, so I'd recommend you have a roof or come take a look at that. Uh, continuing looking at the roof, you can see here as I remove the insulation from around uh, this particular skylight, at some point, we've had some moisture intrusion. It's kind of hard to, to say with these kind of a things if this is an old issue and it's been repaired uh, and, and we just have those old staining or if this is an ongoing thing that the roof is not a new roof. Uh, so it, it very well could be an ongoing issue or again, it could just be a resolved issue from uh, over the last you know, almost 50 years. So I would recommend inquiring with the seller to see if they have uh, any record of any maintenance. Um, and then in addition to or paired with that, uh, having a roofer come take a look at that. 
Uh, then looking at the solar tubes, uh, anywhere that we have any penetrations or flashing or valleys, anything like that, we don't ever want to see them dependent on sealant. So whenever we see this mastic sealant here, uh, to me that says that either the insulation, or I'm sorry, installation was as such that whoever installed it didn't feel confident that it would uh, shed water properly on its own, or potentially that it was leaking in, uh, in an attempt to uh, repair that leak, they went ahead and put this sealant. So again, we want to have a roofer come take a look at it. Uh, looking at the roof, roof is an older roof. Uh, it has what I would say is moderate granular loss. Uh, so um, especially uh, on the south facing areas, the areas that are just getting hit from the, from the sun uh, more so than others, you can see uh, that these darker spots are granular loss. So if you Look at this photo is kind of a good photo. You can see here how light these shingles look and then how dark they look here. The reason why they look so dark there uh, is because of that granular loss. Um, and it's kind of starting to expose the, uh, the, the, the tar impregnated fiberglass mesh there. Uh, so that being said, I recommend you have a roof come take a look at it just to kind of uh, get a second opinion on, uh, on the remaining life on the roof. Uh, additionally, um, there are some areas where we should have kickout flashings that we don't. I'm not seeing any damage. What a kickout flashing is, is so we have this step flashing here, and then at the end we have the kickout flashing that uh, kind of diverts water uh, away from the siding. So I didn't see any damage, but again, if you have any roof maintenance, you you will want to install kickout flashings uh, wherever they uh, are. Uh, an application is uh, appropriate. Uh, looking again at the uh, addition area, there was no attic access, uh, and there was no crawl space access in that area. So. In regard to the uh, those areas, I just cannot say. Uh, I would recommend that you do uh, acquire, uh, establish rather, uh, access so that we can go and uh, go ahead and inspect and figure out what's going on in that attic area and in that crawl space area as well. Uh, looking in the main uh, attic area, lots of areas with miss, uh, missing insulation, lots of low spots of insulation. We want to have at least uh, 14 inches uh, on average. We had lots of areas that were below that. And then we have areas like, so here's on a wall and the insulation's just, it's just fallen over. So we want to see that put back in place and then secured so that it doesn't just flop back over like that. Uh, additionally, I'd recommend we insulate the uh, access cover there. Uh, and then we insulate around uh, all of the um, skylights there as well. So that's going to be, uh, it's going to allow for uh, heat transfer. I did have evidence of mice as well in the attic. So you can see these are little trails that the mice leave. Uh, and then additionally, seeing traps is, is an indicator as well that uh, uh, potentially somebody was aware of or suspicious that there was a uh, pest uh, activity. Um, as I mentioned, we did not have access there in that, uh, that addition area. So I just cannot say, but I would recommend that we establish that uh, point of entry to get that inspected. Uh, we did have a cut floor joist underneath the hall bathroom. So even though these are solid runs with a big portion of the, the joist cut like that, I would recommend uh, getting additional support directly underneath that cut or uh, within three feet of each side. Um, we had a couple areas to work. Uh, vertical posts here on the pony wall were, were removed. Um, so anywhere that the pony wall and the floor joists intersect, we want to have a vertical support. Uh, so I would recommend that anywhere that those are knocked out, uh, that we get them again, put back in place. Uh, the particular uh, posts that I observed that were removed uh, were right near the master bedroom access. Uh, but again, I'm just going to leave that open ended to if there are any additional uh, observed. We do want to anywhere that they intersect, get that addition or get that uh, proper support. Uh, taking a look here. Uh, so we do have some insulation missing in a few areas of the crawl space. So anywhere that we have missing insulation, we want to get that put back in place. Oh, we do have evidence of past water entry there. You can see on the, on the vapor barrier, which is not surprising, uh, being that uh, we had that negative grading uh, as well. So I just recommend kind of the, the good crawl space housekeeping rules, which is uh, full gutters, good site grading, extending your downspouts, uh, maybe uh, pulling sprinklers away from the structure and away from home so they're not going to saturate that soil uh, right near the, the foundation wall there. Uh, anywhere we have any, and we had a few of these uh, crawl space vents that are just loose like this, we want to get them properly secured because that's going to uh, kind of help to mitigate uh, pest entry. Uh, and again, but we did have evidence of, uh, of, of mice in the crawl space as well. Uh, jumping into the interior, this slider here in the master does appear to have a failed seal, uh, as do a couple of the windows. So these windows here in the den, uh, each on the, the adjacent sides there. Uh, of the fireplace uh, here in that left middle bedroom and then in that front uh, middle bedroom as well. Uh, those windows uh, did appear to have failed seals. Uh, as best as I can tell, the newer windows in the home uh, appear to have been replaced uh, in the late 90s. Uh, continuing, uh, one of the front, uh, the living room windows there, uh, it's missing its weep holes. So 
uh, weep holes are there's there's uh, they're going to be holes right here uh, inside uh, the frame, and then there'll be holes on the exterior. And then if water works its way uh, into an openable window like that, uh, that gives that water a place, uh, an avenue to to uh, be dispelled. So I would recommend having a professional go ahead and uh, make those repairs for you because we do want functioning weep holes. Uh, front door uh, deadbolt is a little difficult to, to see there, so just maybe some adjustments. Um, the uh, master pocket door here uh, does not seem to latch, so I'd recommend uh, adjustments or repairs at any of the hardware uh, as needed. Uh, and then the hardware here on the French door uh, does not function here, so I wasn't able to open up that fixed door. Uh, then here in the laundry area, you can see the doorknob, it's just, it's just tired. Uh, looks like it may need uh, uh, repairs or replacing. As you can see, it just rests down with the plunger uh, retracted there. Uh, continuing, uh, this door right here uh, into that family room area uh, was just kind of jam bound. Uh, so I recommend servicing as it's really tight. Uh, the door is really tight there around the frame. Uh, and then we're missing our doors here. Uh, looks like they removed the trim, so it's not as obvious. But uh, at some point, we did have some doors there to uh, enclose that laundry area. I recommend stretching of the carpet. You can see it's just kind of resting on the tack stripping areas. Did have a little bit of damage to the carpet. You can see the seam right here. Uh, we had some some grout missing there in the stone as well. Uh, and then the vinyl. Um, you can see here we have some cuts starting to curl up there as well. Uh, looking here at the, the vinyl uh, tiles there in the master, you can see we just have a gap there. Uh, looking at the laminate, we have some raised edges. Um, to me, it says that you know these were likely not installed by a professional. Uh, so we do have this water feature, and I'm, I'm not sure if it functions. Um, it was not uh, functioning. At the, it was not operating rather uh, at the time of the inspection. Uh, but as, as far as uh, to whether this is uh, serviceable, um, that's kind of beyond the scope of a, of a home inspection. So I would uh, encourage you to, to confirm the function of that uh, prior to closing. Uh, take a look here at the air conditioner. The air conditioner did run, uh, just something to kind of keep on your radar. When the air conditioner is right next to a lint line they, uh, like this, it's going to spit out lint and the air conditioner is going to suck in all that lint while it's running. Uh, so you may end up having to clean that guy a little more often uh, than as is typical. Uh, jumping back under the crawl space, we're kind of here underneath the living room area, and you see that the duct here is just, it's uh, its disconnected. So that big gap right there, we need to get the guy properly secured in there. Um, I would recommend that you just have the, the uh, furnace serviced as well, uh, or unless we can confirm uh, that the um, heater, uh, the, the furnace and the AC have had a tune-up within a calendar year, that we can forget about that, but short of confirming that with the receipt, uh, I would recommend that we, that we have that uh, guy serviced. Uh, taking a look here, we're looking at that uh, the main fireplace there in the front room, uh, the the uh, living room that is. You can see here we have quite a bit of daylight here um, from in the attic, which says that we have some gaps there in the flashing that will need to be repaired to prevent, uh, obviously, uh, water and pest intrusion. Uh, taking a look here uh, at the main panel, we do have an open knockout. So anywhere uh, that we have an open knockout like that, we want to uh, get that obstructed. We don't want to allow access to live electrical. So again, that should have a proper cover, uh, as in this illustration right here. Uh, taking a look here uh, again at what one of the oh no, this is, is this the main panel. Yes, this appears to be the main panel as well. Uh, taking a look at that main panel as well, um, doesn't look like the legend is fully marked. So you want to get uh, every breaker on there fully marked so we know where it goes to what. Uh, taking a look at the sub panel there on the exterior. Again, anywhere we have any of these uh, you know, points of access to live electrical, we want to go ahead and obstruct those. So those should have uh, proper covers uh, installed on those open knockouts as well. And then we can look here at the, the conduit here as well. It's kind of disconnected. So you want to get that properly uh, re-secured there. Uh, we do have a wire going across the front of this as well, which is just a poor practice there. We, this should be much neater inside the panel, so you might want to get that addressed. Uh, and then looking at uh, this other sub-panel here, um, this was in the garage. You can see that we don't have any uh, antioxidant paste here on the uh, aluminum lines, as we should. Uh, and then additionally, there is no legend uh, to that. It's just a, just a breaker there. There's nothing indicating what, it, uh, what it's ran to. Uh, looking at the electrical, we had four outlets here and they were all just on the fireplace or adjacent to the fireplace there that had open ground. So I'd recommend having an electrician repair those. Um, no GFCI uh, outlets in the uh, kitchen, which GFCI outlets are the outlets with the buttons that trip if they get wet. Uh, so that being said, it wasn't really a super common practice at the time uh, that the home was built, but you uh, may want to 
consider that that update. Additionally, we don't have any smoke detectors in the bedrooms. We want to get those installed, and then we want to have carbon monoxide detectors uh, in any hall cluster uh, between any of the gas appliances and then uh, the rooms where, where people will be sleeping. So any rooms that have a closet. Uh, continuing this fixture here um, was humming. So I don't know if you can turn the volume up, but this is going to do it justice. I don't quite think that my device caught that. Uh, let's, let's press play here again. Just it was much, much uh, easier to hear that uh, in person. Again, I don't think that my uh, device quite caught that. Uh, but that being said, uh, just kind of unusual. You may want to have somebody take a look at that. Uh, no garage GFCI outlets as well, which uh, there should be for the uh, age of the home. Uh, and then looking here, it looks like we have some some plumbing that terminates into the attic. So um, anywhere that we have a a, a roof, uh, I'm sorry, a, a plumbing jack, this needs to penetrate through the roof and go to the exterior. Uh, we don't want to allow for uh, harmful sewer gases to collect in the attic. So it looks like at some point, uh, maybe this was abandoned, uh, but it looks like when the roof was replaced that this just was not uh, uh, re-diverted to the exterior as it, as it looks like it originally was. Uh, make sure that the sprinklers are in good working order. Um, so it says here that the, it's kind of fuzzy information here, but it says that we're on a shared well at this home. Uh, so if that's a community well, uh, then we can forget about this. But if it's a, an actual shared well, um, I was not able to locate a well head. Uh, could be on the adjacent property. I was not able to locate a uh, well tank. But we do want to confirm uh, productivity of uh, the well to ensure that it produces enough water uh, for the space. Uh, and additionally, we want to have the water uh, potability, the drinkability of the water tested as well. Uh, so we do have a, a sump pump installed in the crawl space, but it does not look to be ins professionally installed. So uh, it's installed here in like a storage tote. Uh, I was not able to confirm the uh, function of it as there was no power to it. Uh, and then this is just really not a typical um, a drain uh, kind of a material here, this line that we have here. Additionally, following it down, it was ran underneath the biscaline, so we're not able to really track it. And then there were valves uh, installed on it in places and then it transitioned into other kinds of uh, drain material so that being said uh, overall it just looks like this was likely installed by a homeowner um, so that would be a good place to, to start with uh, inquiring on the function and, and the history of it but absolutely we want to get that guy uh, inspected by a professional who can uh, get it in good working order if it does need to be uh, uh, if, if it is uh, necessary for the crawl space to remain dry uh, and definitely make sure that everything's again plumbed up and uh, mechanically sound and able to divert that water to a proper location on the exterior uh, and have a proper installation with an actual sump pit. Uh, I would recommend pumping of the septic tank as well. Um, taking a look at the water heater, it's an older water heater, so just useful life on water heaters, typically 12 to 15 years. So I wanted to make you aware that, it, it, again, it's kind of approaching that that uh, uh, that, that time, just about to hit that 12 to 15 year mark. Um, continuing, looking here, we have filtered water uh, ran from uh, the, the filter there in the front uh, in the garage area, uh, but it does not seem to be hooked up to this valve here uh, there at the sink, so I'm not sure what's going on, but we do uh, at this point not have the filtered water uh, functioning. Uh, taking a look here, uh, the um, stopper here does not function as well, so we pull this ball and rod style stopper and it does not actually pull down the stopper there, so recommend the servicing there. Uh, then looking at that third bathroom, you see we have a crack here in the basin, so maybe time to uh, think about replacing this. Uh, I did not know any leaks at this time, but again, uh, we want to go ahead and get ahead of that so we don't end up damaging the home or uh, any of the materials you know, that could get uh, wet from that leaking. Uh, coming to a close, looking at the garage, uh, that third bay there uh, did not seem to function, so I just uh, hit the wall switches. All of the wall switches appeared to, uh, or all of the uh, panel switches here did work, uh, except for, for that third bay there. Um, so garage, you have what's called a fire rated envelope. And part of that is having 5 8 type X sheetrock between the garage and the living space and the garage and the attic. And with these wooden pull down um, attic accesses, we, we lose that fire rated envelope. So should you want to regain that, uh, you'd have to remove this or potentially cover that with some of that 5 8 type X sheetrock, uh, which again has that, that fire rating we're looking for. Uh, looking at the overhead door here, we're actually missing our weather stripping here. Uh, so I would recommend that you add that weather stripping there to kind of keep out the, the weather and pests, etc. 
Um, we don't have a self-closing hinge here on that door, so I would recommend installing a self-closing hinge on the door uh, from the garage into the living space. Uh, looking at the man door here, uh, it does rub on the door jam there, so it may need servicing, and then it does have a pet door installed. Uh, then lastly, looking at the sheetrock, anywhere that we have any holes or anything, we want to seal those up with a fire-rated caulk, again, to regain that fire-rated envelope. Uh, and then you can see we have some, some cracking here in the sheetrock as well, which uh, you may want to address. Uh, and that is top to bottom. So I do hope that this video is helpful, and I hope between this video and the written report gives you a good understanding of my observations during the course of my inspection. Uh, but should this video not suffice and you have any additional questions, absolutely do feel free to reach out. Um, otherwise, again, my name is Rob. I'd like to say thank you for choosing Pendale, and have a great rest of your day. Alrighty, bye.